we're our own little network of people. We're all friends and there's just such an environment of togetherness. We're all striving towards the same goal together and it's not just we're all strangers, we're all friends. Kind of like a, I don't want to say a playground, but it's kind of like a neat lab where you can come up with new flavors, come up with new styles. Every Everyone here is very encouraging. I mean, I love working with our students. It's been so interesting to teach them the farm to finish product approach. Uh, we've been wanting to do that with ice cream for a very long time. So now we can finally take, to, take them to the farm, load up milk, bring it back here, and at the end of the day, they've put cheese in the mold. I think what makes us different, I mean obviously we're a creamery that's run by a university which is few and far between these days. Um, bringing the students in, being that it is 100% you know, student run, the students come here, they get to get real world experience working. Well, the ice cream starts with the milk which is a blend of the milk at the farm here on the University of Delaware campus that is and it's blended with other local farms. The U Dairy Farm is home to a herd of approximately 100 Holstein dairy cows. Usually, 70 to 90 cows are being milked at a time, while the other 10 to 30 are dry, which means they are not producing milk and waiting to have another calf. A milking cow can produce up to 120 pounds of milk per day. That's almost 14 gallons. A cow can only produce milk for about 305 days after having a calf. 16 cows at a time are milked twice a day, right here on campus at our very own milking parlor. The process begins with coming in and cleaning out the machines. Uh, the most important thing at the beginning of the day is that it starts out as fresh and sterile as possible. Once it's clean, then we can get started. We always start with our unflavored ice cream base. Uh, it's 14% milk fat. It has to be at least 10 to be considered an ice cream in the U.S. Get through up to four or five different types of ice cream by the end of the day. We pour that into the machine and then uh, turn on the blades, turn on the freezer, uh, start the timer, and around 10 minutes start, depending on how big the batch, if we're doing a full batch or a half batch, check that temperature, see where it's at. And it needs to get down to a temperature of 21 degrees. At that point, uh, the ice, little small ice crystals start to form on the barrel. Um, as it goes, the barrel freezes and there's blades inside to keep churning it and churning it so it gets little ice crystals. Uh, we want them to be small ice crystals because if you ever had ice cream at home and you put it in the freezer and take it out a few times, it gets that crunchy aspect. We don't want that. And then you want to get make sure that you have a consistency that's not too liquidy because then that's not going to freeze right and cause recrystallization. Uh, if we have inclusions or variegates that we are adding to it, such as like a graham or a chocolate syrup or maybe some cake pieces, those are added after we take it out of the machine. So we take the batch out of the machine, and then after we mix that in thoroughly by hand, then we add the variegate. So that's your graham swirl or your chocolate syrup. But when you add that variegate, and the reason you add it second and not with the inclusion is so you don't overmix that swirl. So you're able to see the drawn out swirl still in it for more of that wow factor. And also when you get a little extra chunky bit of a caramel swirl, it tends to be very pleasing. Uh, at that point it gets packaged into either pints, half gallons uh, or two and a half gallon containers, which is what we use up front to scoop. At that point, we move it into our hardening freezers, which goes down to negative 25 degrees because we don't want those ice crystals to keep forming. I think it's exciting for me watching the kids, uh, the students learn how to make the ice cream in the back. Um, seeing their excitement, we allow them to create flavors um, and take their ideas. So the process of them creating a flavor, putting it all together on paper, thinking about what they like, and then actually being able to create it and seeing how excited they are um, is definitely fun for me to watch them with their excitement. So. It's really, you know, we want to get students as involved as possible, make sure that they get some experience out of everything, um, whether that's scooping ice cream, making ice cream, making cheese, um, working in our lab. What I've enjoyed is working with students and getting to teach them the cheese making process and then also myself, learning myself different types of cheeses and which ones I like to make. I'm at the Gennardi Innovation Laboratory, which is where we're currently standing, um, we have started making a pasteurized cheese product. Uh, we currently offer cheese curds, Delaware Gold, which is a Colby style cheese, and our first date cheddar, which is a cheddar style cheese. So the process kind of starts 
over at the farm. Uh, we actually drive a truck over with a milk tote, pick up the milk, bring it back over. Um, once it's filled with milk, then we add it to our bat pasteurizer. Once it's in there, we heat it up to 147 degrees for 30 minutes, then we cool it back down, and then begins our cheese making process. So we start by adding in culture. Um, culture will sit in there and activate for about 30 minutes, and that's the bacteria that you add to the cheese to give it flavor. So depending on what you're trying to achieve is the culture you're gonna choose. And then um, after that, we add our calcium chloride to put some calcium back into the milk as well as our run it, which is our coagulating agent. When you're making cheese, pH is the driving factor. Um, you need to bring the pH of the milk, which is normally 6.7, down to around 4.9, 5.0, and that's a safe pH for the cheese to last through aging and then when you go to eat it. So then it sits for another period of time um, so that it does become coagulated, and then at that point is when you cut your curd. So. You run um, wire knives through that curd and you'll get small little pieces and that's where you get your curds in your way. So you'll see a separation of almost a soft white piece of um, curd floating around as well as a more yellow liquid that's your way. After that is the draining process. So you'll actually drain off all the way. Then it's your salting process if you're doing more of a Delaware Gold style, Colby style. Um, then it'll go into the molds, press overnight, and we'll unmold it the next day. If you're doing cheddar cheese or cheddar cheese curds, you actually start a second process called cheddaring. So you actually let the curd settle and then cut it into bricks and stack them on top of each other to help continue to push out the whey. Then we will put it through the curd mill and we take the slabs, we put them through the top. The curd mill will punch them into the perfect cheese curd size shoot them out the bottom, and then we will add either our salt or our spices, depending on what flavor we're making that day. And then those get put into a cheese mold if we're gonna press it for cheddar, or they go straight into a bag into our storefront if you're gonna sell it as cheese curds. When it's smaller, you definitely can see like the amount of hard work that's being put into it. I know like Amanda and Jen are constantly working, and Sam as well, like they just do a lot of hard work. It's like a lot of manual labor. So it's really nice to see um, like the amount of like effort and like heart that they put into it. So I really like to be able to come in and actually learn how like a processing facility works, especially since I'm a food science major. It's like a good look into what I would be doing in my future. Um, they get to serve the ice cream to the public and interact with the uh, the community, which is awesome. They get to create the ice creams. They get to make the ice creams. Um, even our uh, supervisors at night are all students as well. So um, having it run basically by all students, um, I think makes us unique. But those are all the really interesting aspects that the creamery doesn't always get to talk about um, that happens kind of behind the scenes. But honestly, I love everything that we've made so far, so I'm very excited to share it with everyone else. Because I'm passionate about the ice cream, I love the ice cream, and being able to see other people also enjoy the ice cream makes, makes it very fulfilling. <laughs>